sewage treatment. This is excreta disposal through water carriage system. Water carriage system. In this system, human excreta and wastewater are carried away by a network of underground sewers to the sewage disposal plant. Components of uh, water carriage system comprise of household sanitary fittings, soil pipes, house drain, public sewer, finally leading the sewage to sewage treatment plant. The flow of sewage is from household sanitary fittings to soil pipes which lead to house drain, which leads to public sewer and the sewage is carried through public sewers to the finally to sewage treatment plant. Sewer accessories, manholes, this is for repairs and periodic cleaning. Manholes are, uh, you have must have seen them around your, you. They are placed wherever there is a change in the direction of the sewer or at the junction of two or more sewers. At regular intervals, if the sewer has a straight run, at regular intervals of 100 meters. There is a risk of gas poisoning and death by asphyxiation for cleaners if they enter the sewer for cleaning purposes without taking due precaution. Another sewer accessory is traps. The purpose of traps is to prevent foul gases from entering houses or street and to retain sand, grit, etc. from sewage. The traps are placed at the underwater closet in the household fittings at the junction of the house drain and street sewer and where the surface water enters the sewers if the strong waters is also carried by sewers. Let us consider the concept of biochemical oxygen demand or BOD because BOD is the most important test carried out on sewage. Why is this BOD carried out? BOD is carried out to determine the strength of sewage. So periodically the strength of sewage needs to be seen for any treatment plant because it ultimately dictate, tells what is the amount of organic matter in the sewage. Definition of BOD is the amount of oxygen absorbed by a sample of sewage during a specified period and at a specified temperature for total aerobic digestion of the organic material present in it. BOD of uncontaminated natural water supply is usually as low as 1 mg per litre compared to BOD of strong and untreated sewage which is around 300 mg per litre. A given sample of sewage is called as strong if the BOD is more than 300 mg per litre and the sewage is weak if BOD is less than 100 mg per litre. The aim of sewage treatment is to bring down the BOD to such an acceptably low level before it can be actually disposed of into land, river or sea, whatever way is feasible. A brief mention of other measures for measuring the strength of sewage chemical oxygen demand or COD and amount of suspended solids. Chemical oxygen demand is defined as the amount of oxygen required to oxidize the organic matter while using an oxidizing agent. For example, acidic solution of dichromate and oxidizing the organic matter into carbon dioxide and water. COD is used where BOD is not visible because of presence of toxic materials which interfere with the activities of microorganisms. Hence, BOD is not visible. Suspended solids are measured in terms of milligram per liter or ppm parts per million. The aim of sewage treatment is to convert an offensive and infectious sewage into inoffensive effluent and sludge. The inoffensive effluent and sludge can then be safely disposed of into either land, river or sea, whatever is feasible for the location of sewage treatment plant. In the process of sewage treatment, both aerobic and anaerobic processes are involved for the purpose of purifying the sewage. The aerobic method is used for treating the whole sewage as such and oxidizing it and 
hence it requires a continuous supply of oxygen dissolved in normal sewage the aerobic bacteria break the organic matter present in the sewage into simpler substances like carbon dioxide ammonia water nitrates and sulfates the anaerobic oxidation is used for treating the sediment known as sludge the sludge is a highly concentrated sewage and contains plenty of solids the end products of anaerobic method uh, of anaerobic oxidation are methane ammonia carbon dioxide and hydrogen the methane which is produced in sludge digester is a side product which can be used for fuel purposes the steps involved in the treatment of sewage sewage is treated in three stages primary treatment secondary treatment and tertiary treatment primary treatment is to make sewage ready for oxidation which is the main treatment aerobic oxidation secondary treatment and tertiary treatment primary treatment consists of screening the sewage grit removal from the sewage and primary sedimentation which results in sludge sedimentation which is sent to sludge digesters and the effluent is sent for secondary treatment where the sewage is oxidized by aerobic bacteria this oxidation of organic matter can be achieved by either of the two methods that is percolating filters or by using activated sludge process this is followed by secondary sedimentation where the sediment or sediment or sludge is produced tertiary treatment involves treatment of the sludge which is produced during the sedimentation processes and disposal of effluent sewage treatment plant is demonstrated by way of flow diagram first step is screening followed by passing through grit chamber then primary sedimentation tank the sludge formed is sent to sludge digester digester and the effluent is sent for biological treatment or aerobic oxidation that is the main treatment of sewage after aerobic oxidation sewage is sent to the secondary sedimentation tank or the also known as final sedimentation tanks where the effluent is released is disposed of after proper chlorination and the sludge formed in the secondary sedimentation tank is again sent into sludge digester methane produced by anaerobic oxidation in the sludge digester can be used as a fuel and the sludge remaining sludge can be sent to sludge drying beds the entire process from screening to primary sedimentation tank is known as primary treatment the process of actual oxidation actual biological aerobic oxidation and secondary sedimentation tank is known as secondary treatment primary treatment in a little more detail first step is screening second step is grit removal and third is primary sedimentation tank screening sewage is flowed through a metal bar screen the screen retains large floating objects like wood rags dead animals flowing in the sewage and the screenings from the screen are manually removed and disposed of by burial the sewage then through flows to a long narrow chamber known as grit chamber here the sewage flows slowly but fast enough to keep the organic matter moving whereas the heavy organic solids they settle down the grit which settles down consists of stones sand gravel etc this grit if it is allowed to enter the treatment plant it leads to heavy wear and tear and may damage the equipment of the treatment plant after grit removal the sewage is sent to the primary sedimentation tank which is a huge tank it can come in many designs but mainly it is rectangular sewage here moves so slowly that it spends 6 to 8 hours in the tank and while it is stands for such a long time in the tank sedimentation occurs 50 to 60% of the suspended solids now settle down the settled solids are known as sludge 
Sometimes alum may be needed for faster precipitation of animal protein, which finally settles down as sludge. The sludge is removed by mechanically operated bottom scrapers. The removed sludge is directed to sludge digesters. The fat and grease present in the sewage rises to the surface and forms scum, which is removed mechanically by scum skimmers. The supernatant is then led to the secondary treatment, that is for oxidation. This slide shows the primary treatment screen. The sewage is, can be seen flowing through the screen. This is the, then the grid chamber. In the primary sedimentation tank, one can see the scum being formed and removed by the scum skimmer. Steps in the secondary treatment. The primary, the first thing is aerobic oxidation of the effluent from the primary sedimentation tank, followed by secondary sedimentation. Aerobic oxidation involves oxidation of the organic bacteria matter by organic uh, by aerobic bacteria. So this is biological treatment of the effluent from the primary tank. Organic matter is oxidized into carbon dioxide, water. The nitrogenous waste is converted into ammonia and nitrates. This aerobic oxidation is done by the aerobic bacteria is known as biological treatment and can be carried out either by using percolating filters or by using activated sludge process. Secondary sedimentation. Here after the oxidation, the sewage is sent into secondary sedimentation tanks where it is retained for 2-3 to three hours. This time is enough for the sludge to settle down fast. The sludge formed in the secondary sedimentation here is known as aerated sludge or activated sludge. Activated sludge is not offensive in smell and rich in nitrates and phosphates and rich in aerobic bacteria. Hence, activated sludge can be dried and used as valuable manure. Some of the activated sludge is pumped back if aeration chamber has been used for oxidizing the sewage because this sludge serves as a source of aerobic microorganism for oxidation of sewage in the aeration tanks. The remaining sludge is pumped back, is pumped into the sludge digestion tank. A little more detail about the aerobic oxidation by, uh, by the two methods of aerobic oxidation. First is percolating filter or trickling filter in which the sewage is oxidized using a percolating filter. A percolating or trickling filter is a bed of crushed stones around 1 to 2 meter deep and uh, various uh, diameters depending upon the size of the population which is to be served. There is a revolving device which uniformly sprinkles the primary tank effluent onto these stones. This device is a system of hollow pipes with holes in it through which the sewage flows and is sprayed out onto the surface of the bed. As the pipes rotate, a thin layer of effluent is sprinkled onto the surface of the filter. The effluent then trickles down the filter. Soon a, a zooglier layer is formed. The zooglier layer on the surface of the stones. The zooglier layer consists of aerobic bacteria, algae, fungi, protozoa, all of them uh, oxidized by aerob aerobic method. The organisms present in this zooglier layer, they oxidize the effluent as it percolates down and thereby purifying it. So the major mechanism of action in purifying sewage is oxidation of aerobic oxidation of the sewage by aerobic bacteria or microorganisms and other microorganisms. Because uh, the stones are large, there are enough spaces in between the stones, the wind blows freely through the bed of stones and provides the oxygen required by the zooglier layer for aerobic oxidation. The zooglier layer keeps growing and the older layers slough off. This slough is known as humus. The oxidized, the sewage which percolates through the bed is now completely oxidized and is now led into the secondary sedimentation tank also known as humus tanks. So note that percolating filter is not actually a filter because the stones are too large to actually filter. The process here is purification of the sewage by pure biological oxidation.
the functioning of percolating filter is shown by way of pictures this is uh, uh, the stone bed the filter a close up of the stand bed of the percolating filter this figure shows how the pipes are rotating and spraying out sewage onto the surface of the stone bed the percolated oxidized sewage is then led into secondary sedimentation tanks for secondary sedimentation the sludge is formed again another method for aerobically oxidizing the sewage is activated sludge process which can be used instead of percolating filters here this is a modern alternative to percolating filter for oxidizing sewage aerobically the oxidation here is done in an aeration tank the effluent from the primary sedimentation tank is mixed with sludge drawn from the final sedimentation tank because that sludge is a rich source of aerobic bacteria in the proportion of 70 to 30 the mixture is then subjected to aeration for 6 to 8 hours within the aeration tank this aeration can be achieved by mechanical agitation of the mixture or by forcing compressed air continuously from the bottom the organic matter is completely oxidized by the aerobic organism using the oxygen into carbon dioxide nitrates and water the harmful bacteria are definitely destroyed and the coliform bacteria are greatly reduced in number this oxidized sewage is now led into secondary sedimentation tank the table compares the activated sludge plant with percolating filter plant Active, activated sludge plant requires 1/10 of the space as compared to percolating filter but it is more expensive to install compared to percolating filter and requires more skill operation and hence activated sludge plant is more suited for larger cities as compared to percolating filter activated sludge process by way of pictures we can see that the sewage is being agitated it looks like that it is boiling it is actually the diffuse aeration which is occurring this is completely oxidized aerobically and then led into secondary sedimentation tank where quickly the activated sludge settles down this picture shows a drained circular sedimentation tank the scrapers can be seen at the bottom which rotate and remove sludge from time to time it rotates slowly after the sewage has been aerobically oxidized by either the percolating filter or in the aeration tank or activated sludge method the resulting and after secondary sedimentation the resulting sludge and the effluent are sent for tertiary treatment so tertiary treatment consists of sludge digestion and effluent disposal sludge digestion sludge digestion is carried out in sludge digestion tanks here the sludge is incubated under favorable temperature and ph in the absence of air in closed tanks hence it undergoes anaerobic auto digestion in this process the volume of sludge is greatly reduced and it becomes inoffensive sticky and tarry mud which dries readily and is an excellent manure complex solids are here broken down into water carbon dioxide ammonia and methane methane is a by product of sludge digestion and can be used for fuel purposes the sludge may then after a complete auto digestion the remaining solid of the sludge may be disposed of by sea disposal or land composting the effluent disposal effluent resulting in the after secondary sedimentation can be disposed of by dilution that is the effluent is discharged into a water body after chlorination but following standards have to be met the suspended solid in the effluent should not be more than 30 mg per liter and the bod should not exceed 20 mg per liter alternatively the effluent can be disposed on land that is used for irrigation like it is done in okla treatment plant at new delhi
pictorial representation of tertiary treatment. This is a sludge digester. We can say it is an enclosed. We can see that it is an enclosed tank, so no air entry is possible for enabling anaerobic oxidation. Methane rises above, which can be used as a fuel, and the reduced volume sludge can be dried in the sludge drying beds and then can use as beers as a fertilizer. The effluent can be disposed of in a water body or can be used for irrigation purposes.